Recently, I got to fly the Kodiak 900, which is a 900 horsepower, 200 plus knot cruise airplane that carries 10 people, it has a cargo pod, and it can still take off and land in under 1,500 feet. Those stats are kind of crazy. Now, there are plenty of airplanes that will do one or a few of those stats, but not very many or any that will do all of it. So it's a really unique airplane. And I don't know about you, but it's definitely the most expensive and high-powered airplane that I've ever flown from the left seat. So I wanted to be able to put a video together documenting what it was like to fly. And by the way, they're not paying me to say any of this. These are my honest impressions after spending a day in the airplane. So walking up to the airplane, that five-bladed prop just looks monstrous on that 900 horsepower engine. It looks fast and it's very much got a TBM-like feel to it. And the cargo pod underneath, it's got tons of room in it. It's really easy to access. It's really easy to lock and unlock. It does have a little bit of a guppy look to it. You can just tell it's a big airplane. But that prop on the front, it, you can tell that it's a fast plane and it's just got a really unique ramp appeal. So a couple ways to tell it apart from the Kodiak 100. One, it's got an extra set of windows. The five-bladed prop is a lot bigger than the one on the 100. And then it's also got wheel pants. That's a really easy, quick way to tell it's a 900. It's built for speed. Climbing up into the cockpit was great and it was easy. However, <laughs> I almost got my fingers cut off before we even started. So the pilot door is held open magnetically uh, to the side of the engine cowling there, which works fine, but we had a citation startup and taxi out right in front of us and it blew the door closed with some authority and I happened to just not have my fingers in the way, but it would have been bad. So note to self, if you ever fly a Kodiak, don't rest your hands and your fingers there on the door frame, keep them inside. Now the cockpit is awesome. It is clean, it's basically just three TV screens with a G1000 NXI in front of you. So it's really clean, it's not cluttered. I mean, overall, it's just beautiful. And as far as the size of the cabin goes, to me, it really felt like the right amount of roominess, while also not feeling like you're sitting in the top of a city bus or the front of an RV or something. You got plenty of room, but it also feels cozy. I don't know, it kind of felt like you were just just driving a tall, bigger 206 or something. But my favorite part of flying turbine aircraft, and I'm just starting to get into this world, so it's still like phenomenally exciting to me, is has got to be the startup sequence. It's really, really easy to do. It's way easier than starting any piston aircraft you've ever flown, because it's not temperamental. You're not worried about flooding the engine. You don't have vapor lock. You don't have all these other issues in the, in the piston world. It's literally a few switches and you start it up. Pretty simple. Easy. And it makes the coolest sound in the world when you engage the starter. Really feels like you're in a SpaceX capsule or something because it does this real and it's kind of this rising tone. Here we go, start. So you hear the igniters going, starters, there's 15%. I'll add that fuel for you to low idle. And now we're watching ITT and NG here. And the prop starts, you know, spinning real slowly and slowly and it starts speeding up, speeding up, speed. and you can just tell that there's so much thrust up there and it's just starting to, to uh, turn the engine. Ah, it's just, it's really cool. It just doesn't get old. And once it's started, there's really nothing to do. There's not a run, I mean, you still have like a few checklist items and things, but there's not a magneto check because there's no magnetos on the engine. And so really once the engine started, it's ready. Taxiing is also pretty fun. I mean, you've got so much power from that 900 horsepower engine and you don't have the massive bush wheels like you do in the Kodiak 100, and so it rolls really, really easily. Basically, as soon as you take your feet off the brakes, you are rolling. And so to not have to ride the brakes the whole time because you got so much power, you basically move the engine into what's called beta range, which is in between idle and reverse. So it's changing the angle of the prop, so you're basically creating no thrust at all. But the coolest part about it is that it makes a really cool sound. It goes from the, the normal turbine engine, which sounds cool to begin with, and it changes it into a <laughs> it's like this weird cave creature like sound that um, I think it's funny because you just have to embrace it because I, I feel like oh shoot Am I making like a lot of noise out on the ramp like sorry guys sorry guys There's no way around it. You're doing it correctly So you just kind of have to embrace it and be like I'm that guy and I'm taxiing around in beta doing a wah, wah. So if you ever fly a turboprop just know somewhere Somehow Charlie has a smile on his face because somebody's in beta right now and he digs it So takeoff was really interesting for two reasons first by the time we slowly advanced the throttle to takeoff power Power, it was already ready to fly. Basically, rotation speed was something like 60 knots, which felt kind of slow in that big of an airplane, but you can tell the airplane's got so much lift. It just really wants to fly, and so we were off in an instant. The second interesting thing is that I was prepared to give it like all the right rudder I could possibly handle. Because even in my 182, I need some right rudder, and this has a 900 horsepower engine, which is several times larger uh, than my airplane, but since we used a ton of right rudder trim, it actually wasn't very bad at all. Like, I remember flying the Cessna Turbo 206, and the right rudder we needed was significant. Ooh, a lot of right rudder. 
Spot the right rudder there. So mentally, I was prepared for that or more, but we didn't end up needing nearly as much rudder as I thought. After takeoff, I experienced a pretty cool feature of the Kodiak, and, and that's while we were retracting the flaps. The Kodiak provides you with automatic trim adjustments so that you're not you don't end up with the nose dropping like crazy as the flaps come up. Now, that's a small thing, but it adds up and honestly it keeps the flight attitude really smooth during the departure without you having to do very much. We'll go flaps all the way up. Again, you'll get auto trim. That's nice. Trim for the win. The climb performance was awesome as we were nearly at gross weight with tons of fuel on board. We had five people, a lot of camera gear with us, but we were still getting over a thousand feet per minute and we were going 168 knots true airspeed, which wasn't even maximum climb, but we were still moving. I mean, compared to the piston airplanes I'm used to, we were climbing twice as fast and we were moving twice as fast. So basically we were going twice as fast this way and also twice as fast this way, which is basically like four times the performance. So you can see why it started to get to my attention, I thought, man, we're not in Kansas anymore. Oh, that sounded good in my head. I don't know why I said it, but we're gonna roll with it. In cruise at 12,000 feet, we we're getting about 208 knots of true airspeed. Mark Brown, our demo pilot, said that without that radar pod, you get the extra two knots to achieve the advertised 210 knots of cruise speed. And you're burning about 64 gallons an hour in the process. Now, turboprops, they do it all in pounds, which is still annoying. So if you're like a jet pilot, you're like, yeah, I get with the picture. But to me, everything is gallon centric. But in turboprop world and jet world, everything's in pounds. So uh, I had to do the math, figure out, it was about 64 gallons an hour or so. So that means the range, if you're doing your max performance cruise, you get about 900 to 1,000 miles of range, but you're also carrying a lot in the process and going over 200 knots. So I think the collective performance, knowing that you can still land in under 1,500 feet when you get there is pretty awesome. Now we were going pretty fast in cruise, but honestly what was so impressive to me was that it can still fly really slow and it's extremely maneuverable in that process. To me, it did not fly like an 8,000 pound airplane. I mean, it's significantly larger than all the pistons I'm flying, but it didn't really feel like that. Like the maneuverability was really, really good. We did some slow flight and the airplane basically flew itself at 70 knots, trimmed out, including some moderately steep turns. So it was while we were doing this that I forgot, honestly, that I was in an 8,000 pound airplane. I mean, I, as the footage shows here, I kept looking behind me just to remind myself, like there's several rows of seats behind me. I'm not just flying a big 206 or something, even though that's what it felt like. It, it didn't fly like an 8,000 pound airplane. It's really maneuverable and you can still fly really slow. The stall characteristics are pretty interesting too. Now they can't legally say that this airplane is impossible to stall or spin. But this ship can't sink. <laughs> but they designed it so it's extremely hard to fully stall it or even spin the aircraft. The way they do that is basically it's two uh, wings in one, and so the outside portion of the wings has a shallower angle of attack, and so you still have airflow going over that portion of the wing and, and going over the aileron, and so I'm pointing backwards, this is the wind. <laughs> this is the wind over the aileron. And so while you're in a stall, you still have aileron controllability and can still turn the aircraft, which is a really weird thing to be doing while you're in a stall. You wouldn't normally try to do that, but uh, Mark demonstrated it, and it was both equally weird and awesome. Okay make a left hand turn, I can make a right hand turn, <laughs> I can go back to the left. I have full aileron controllability. Moving on to the landing, it was really nice that the approach was flown at about 70 to 80 knots, which isn't really that much faster than the 60 to 65 knots or so that I'm used to in my Cessna 182. So the sight picture, it wasn't very foreign to me. And that makes this airplane really approachable to learn how to land. The main differences that stood out to me in trying to land a turbine aircraft were twofold. First is that while you do have an enormous amount of thrust, you got a huge engine up there, the thrust is not immediate. So when you're landing a piston, if you need to give it full thrust, or even just give it a little bit of throttle, it's pretty instant. In a turbine, that's not really the case because there's a little bit of a delay, a little bit of a spool up or spin up period for that turbine uh, to end up producing the thrust that you're needing. Engineers, that's probably not the technically correct definition, but the point in the application is that you have to be a little bit ahead of the airplane because it's gonna take a second to produce the thrust that you're needing. And then the second thing is that when you go completely idle on the throttle and that propeller blade gets to a shangle, shangle? <laughs> shallow angle of attack, you have an enormous amount of drag out front. And so it really slows down the airplane. And so what do those two things mean combined? In my, my impression, and I'm new to turboprop world, is that it's a little bit more of a finesse to find that happy medium between having enough thrust and not getting behind the airplane, while also not creating more drag than you're wanting. And so it's a little bit more finesse, but it's kind of a fun challenge. Now, by the time we touched down, I was so focused on landing short and throwing in reverse and just trying to stick the landing that I, I did not grease the landing. I mean, it was more of an arrival than a landing, but for my first time, I'll take it. And then throwing the engine into reverse, I mean, that is just a ton of fun. And it sounds really, really cool too. And so 
the short field performance, I mean, it's just awesome. And obviously I was only experiencing a small portion of what it can do, but landing a big airplane that was easy to fly, thrown in reverse and landing reasonably short, I mean, that was just exhilarating. Okay, so for all of the upsides, what's the downside? Well, the first and most obvious is cost. I mean, as of this filming, a new Kodiak 900 costs $3.9 million, not to mention the ongoing operating costs of the airplane, insurance and that sort of thing. Uh, and then by the time you're watching this, the, the purchase price could be higher. And so compared to pistons, it's way more expensive. Compared to other turbine aircraft, there are many more expensive airplanes than this. And so I think Kodiak is trying to position this as an economical alternative, even though it's not economical for me. Uh, you know, since it has one engine, it can carry so much and just go places that other turboprops simply can't. But for now, this is still way outside my price range. The second possible downside is speed, depending on how you look at it. I mean, compared to piston aircraft, yeah, it's really fast, but there are several turbine airplanes that go faster than this, but I wouldn't say that it's slow by any means. But if you're wanting TBM or jet speeds, you want to go really fast. I mean, no, this isn't your airplane. I think what the Kodiak might have slightly given up in speed, they traded for in useful load and short field capability. So that way it could fit a wide range of missions. So I think it really just comes down to what kind of mission you need a plane to solve because each has their own strengths. Talking about this airplane is fun, but flying it is even better. And so the video on the screen has our whole demo flight where you can see exactly what it's like to fly this airplane firsthand. So I'll see you there.